Hello everybody, my name is Eva and I'm a co-founder and co-CEO of Macromo. Recently I won lead Today Shape Tomorrow startup competition in Vienna and that means that Macromo will be featured on Nasdaq billboard. I'm super excited about flying to New York and seeing it myself. I also won She Loves Take Southern Europe a pitch competition and our company successfully raised over 1 million euro in pre-seed. And so today I would like to share with you some tips about pitching your startup. Uh, this will be mainly valid for pre-seed stage because uh, this is a stage I have uh, the most experience in. I believe it will be different in seed or in series A, but maybe some of them are applicable. These are mostly soft skills um, and my personal observation about what works. So um, watch this video with the consideration that you already need to have a, a realistic problem to solve, a good solution for it, and then functioning business model. Because if you don't have the basics right, even these like nice tips won't help you. So with that said, let's jump into the video. All right, these are my five tips to make a perfect pitch. First one, never stop iterating. As many of you know, my background is in product design. I used to work as a lead product designer in one of the big tech companies in Silicon Valley. And every designer knows the saying, design is never finished. And I think that the same goes for features, startups, products, anything, even pitch decks. So, you know, create the best version you can at this point show it to some people, receive their feedback, and then iterate and iterate and iterate. At Macromo, we have around 100 versions of our pitch deck. And when I look at the first one we made over a year ago, it's not good. And I think that the same will happen next year when I will look at the current version and we will be on some version 200 or something like that. I will be like, yeah, this version wasn't good. <laughs> The second one is about feedback and getting the right kind of feedback. I would say that the best people to get um, feedback from are people who decided to not invest, to not close that partnership or to not list your product um, in their store. Empathize with these people and find what are the main drawbacks, what are their problems. Sometimes people will try to uh, suggest their solutions. I personally don't implement other people's solutions. Instead, I'm trying to look what are their main concerns. The same goes uh, when you are developing products. You are always looking for like the underlying concerns and then you are trying to craft uh, the best solution you possibly can. And um, I would say people will give you conflicting feedback. So I always try to listen or try to implement something that I heard multiple times. Like for example, in Macromo, we had a huge problem uh, in uh, explaining our user groups because you know everybody is interested in their health or like not interested, but everybody has health, you know, everybody has health issues. So you end up with quite wide user groups, like it's, it's very wide and we had trouble to explain the use cases and it seemed like we are not standing on solid ground, like we are, you know, too spread out. Um, then we were able to fix this issue, but, you know, we found out that this is the main issue within our page because we were asking a lot of questions to people who decided to not move forward with us. Third tip, no size fits all. There's definitely multiple different angles how you can present one company or one product. And I would say it's very essential to tailor the pitch deck or the presentation you are giving to the old audience you are giving it to. I always try to adjust my story because some people like more like a storytelling and uh, grand visions. Some people like numbers and facts. And so uh, depending on the audience, I always adjust what I'm telling to them. I strongly believe in preparing for presentations. So I always try to time my presentation right. If I'm supposed to talk for five minutes, I will be talking for five minutes. Because the worst thing is that if they cut you off, that's, that's not good. 
or if they don't have time to ask questions, that's also not good. So like always prepare it, you know, when I'm pitching somewhere, I'm uh, repeating the presentation every evening, like twice or something like that. I don't try to memorize my presentations. I think that then they don't feel natural. I just say it, you know, I try to find the right words, the right sentences that, you know, deliver the message. Sometimes I pitch it to my friends, which heard me pitching like 10 times. They are quite annoyed by that, but they are my friends, so they are eager to help. So just practice, practice, practice and ask for feedback. And the fifth is speaking itself. I was observing the competitions I was part of and um, it struck me that uh, people are doing some basic mistakes. First, before you come to stage, make sure you are calm. I recommend to stretch or do a couple of push-ups or something like that in the backstage. If you are sitting in the backstage and then you just like walk on the stage, it will not feel the best as it can. So, you know, since you will be probably standing presenting just before, like 10, 15 minutes before, just stand up, do something active, of course, quietly, because if you have mic, then people can probably hear you. If you are somewhere where they can see you, just go to the bathroom and do the stretching and stuff in the bathroom. I usually do that. I feel like that if you move your body, then like your posture will be better and posture and confidence is everything. And so then you come to stage, you need to have open gestures like I'm demonstrating right now. I don't have it throughout the video, but just, you know, like a ballerina, you need to be open. If you are doing something like this or like looking at the ground or I don't know, uh, moving awkwardly, that will be pretty bad. Like people will feel like you are not confident and they won't like look at you the same way. So just, you know, open gestures, nice uh, wide shoulders. That's, that's the posture you want to have. If you are shaking a little bit, which sometimes people do because they are nervous, most of the times people in the audience won't see it because if you are like shaking like slightly and you are like very far away from them, they won't see it, so it's fine. So you come to the stage and I hate when people start talking right away. Like, why are you doing it? Like, I always say, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored to be here. My name is Eva and I'm a co-founder and co-CEO of Macromo. It's like trying to introduce yourself um, and thanking people for their time that they are actually listening to, super important. Then the voice. I don't like when people talk fast when they are presenting, especially in real life. In these YouTube videos, I'm fine with talking a little bit faster, but when I'm uh, presenting something, I try to talk in very calm way and try to pronounce every word well and try to just, you know, uh, make sure that people feel nice uh, about the things I'm saying. Also, don't use buzzwords. Don't use shortcuts. Don't use um, concepts that are hard to grasp. I think using simple English, talking calmly, is one of the the, the most uh, like key things to do. Like a lot of startup founders do this incorrectly. They will try to impress you with all of the things they did. Then they will talk fast. Then um, people will like not get the main ideas and they will left confused. So just try to be a, a, a good speaker. And again, practice makes perfect. So I said, and that was my last tip. Um, hope this helped um, at least a little bit. I think that I will rewatch this video myself in the future because I, you know, still need to think about this every time I'm uh, pitching something. Um, and if you like this kind of content and would like to see it in a written form, I have a Substack newsletter called Learning to be a Leader because, you know, I'm still learning to be a good manager and a good CEO of a startup. It's definitely different than um, being individual contributor in big tech um, as I used to be or, you know, having a small agency. 
you really need to learn new things very fast because the organization you are handling is the biggest one you ever had in your hands and you know we are hiring quite a lot uh, macromo is about 20 employees right now it is uh, challenging to get everybody on the same page to get funding make sure your customers are satisfied b2c especially i'm sharing my observation and learnings there um so it might be interesting for you to read uh, you can find the link below down in the description and with that said we will see each other next time have a nice day bye bye